And without further ado, again, thank you all and welcome to today's session of the Women's Future Leadership Academy. We're so glad that you have joined us. Uh, before we begin, I just wanted to give a little shout out to all of our corporate sponsors. Uh, these are the companies that underwrite student, um, uh, our students' participation in the Women's Future Leadership Academy. So without these uh, wonderful uh, corporate partners and their volunteer efforts and their support of the Women's Future Leadership Academy, we would not be able to have this great program every week. So just want to say a quick thanks to our partners, ADP, the Deloitte Foundation, MetLife, Sanofi, Church and Dwight, Carney Bank, New Jersey Resources, Merck, CNBC, Wells Fargo, CDW, EY, Fidelity, L'Oreal, Prudential, PSENG, and Valley Bank. Thank you to all of you. And upcoming sessions. So if you have, if this is your first session joining us, um, we have some great activities and sessions planned uh, for the upcoming weeks that you can join live or view later. Um, next week, we have ACE the interview. So if you're thinking about job interviews or college interviews, or if you just want to practice your public speaking skills, um, we're going to be giving you some tips um, on how to answer some tricky interview questions. Uh, February 2, uh, we're going to talk about getting energized, how you can really um, find that better school and life balance. On February 9th, we have our monthly executive career panel. This is when we bring in some really fabulous leaders uh, here in New Jersey, some women leaders. Usually we have about uh, between three and five speakers, and uh, they all have really great stories to tell. They've all been very successful, and they are here to share their career advice, um, and words of inspiration with you. So that's happening February 9th. February 16th is a new session called Know Yourself, thinking about uh, what makes you think, um, how, you, how you lead, and that will help you uh, become a stronger leader in the end. If you kind of know your basic thoughts, your basic ways of working uh, to help you become a better leader. March 2nd, we all have a lot of tough decisions to make. There's processes that you can use to help you make some of those tough decisions. We're gonna be going over that on March 2nd. March 9th, we have our second uh, or a monthly executive career panel again, which you can join and get your questions asked. Uh, March 16th, we're gonna be talking about building your own personal brand. So how you present yourself to others. Do you look professional um, in the way you uh, write and speak and how do you wanna present yourself? Um, and then on April 13th, we've got another financial empowerment workshop. Um, looking ahead, we have on our calendar an in-person forum, Women's Future Leadership Forum at our education center in Edison, New Jersey. And that's going to be open to all students who have participated in the Women's Future Leadership Academy so far. Uh, we are keeping our fingers crossed that we can have that live and in person because we know how important that is to all get together. Um, so stay tuned for more information about that. That will be a, a full day event on March 31st right here in the Education Center. So again, if you are just joining us, you can continue to build your leadership skills with Junior Achievement. Um, we know that everybody has different schedules. Everybody has different ways they'd like to participate. Um, so if you really wanna get more involved um, in, in Junior Achievement and the Women's Future Leadership Academy, we've got some great um, opportunities for you. First, you can earn our digital badge for career readiness. So digital badges are a fairly new thing. A lot of us have them. They are sort of micro-credentials that we can add to our LinkedIn profiles or our resumes or our college applications even that kind of say that you have earned a particular set of skills. So if, if you want to earn our badge for career readiness, it's really cool. All you have to do is attend five or more sessions, complete a simple survey, and submit a final project. Also, if you really want to get involved, you can become a Women's Future Leadership Academy student ambassador or a member of our new council, which is an in-depth internship type program. Um, ambassadors act as representatives in their community and school, and the council is that internship type program that goes throughout the rest of the school year. So if you'd like to find out e information about either of those or to uh, about the digital badge for career readiness or to register for any of the upcoming sessions, all you have to do is go on our website, janjacademy.org, we try to put everything there together for you on the student tab. So just head on over to our website, janjacademy.org, find the student tab, and that is where you'll get all the information. Okay, so moving along, we're going to talk about time management strategies. Um, 
And a lot of what we talk, when we talk about time management, we really have to think about um, what we are doing now and our own priorities. Um, because obviously time management starts now and the things that you do now are going to affect what you do tomorrow in, in, in regards to achieving your goals and where you wanna go. So uh, without further ado, I would like to turn it over to our um, J and J intern and Princeton University student, Oriana. Uh, I've asked Oriana to say a couple of words about some of the things that we're doing and also to share her own strategies for time management, as you can imagine, as a busy student at Princeton University and an intern with Junior Achievement. She has a lot on her plate and she always gets it done. Uh, so Oriana, please, uh, please welcome Oriana and uh, thank you for being here, Oriana. No, I'm always glad to be here, Chrissy. Thank you so much for the introduction. Hi everyone, as Chrissy said, my name is Oriana Nelson and I'm a sophomore here at Princeton University. Before I get in a little bit about, about me, I wanna talk about what I'm doing here at WFLA, or Women's Future Leadership Academy. One of the things I'm focusing on is building the ambassador program, which you can sign up for under the website, on the JNJ website, specifically the WFLA website, and you can sign up for the ambassador program, which basically we're working on now you have facilitating opportunities to work on your public speaking and is working on small products to really develop the WFLA program. For those of you who do not know, WFLA was in person before COVID. So we had to, you know, change the whole platform to make it virtual. So we're always trying to find activities to develop the program. And so the ambassador program is in place to help us do that in addition to the council application um, as well. And just to get a little bit more information about me, um, I am currently in the STEM field, still trying to figure out exactly which major. I'm leaning more toward chemistry at the moment. And I also really involved with mentorship and helping, um, you know, volunteering with the community and things of that nature. And so as Christy said, there's a lot on my plate. So, you know, time management is a very important skill that I have to practice in my everyday life. And one thing I think is really important is to um, plan ahead. And when I say plan ahead, not just like, you know, pen out in your head, physically write down or type down or type what activities you have to get done. And even if you have to put in a calendar, do that help to help you keep track because it's very easy to get overwhelmed with all the things you have to do. So it's constantly running through your head that you have to do this activity or you have to go make that errand. And you can get very overwhelming, especially during times of COVID. It's important to try to reduce the stress as much as possible. So just writing it down, if you like doing it outside of being outside, you know, um makes you peaceful or listening to your favorite song and just jotting down things you have to get done is very helpful another thing i would also suggest is taking breaks in between just to make sure you're not burning yourself out because when you're burning yourself out and you're trying to push yourself into activities you're not as productive when your brain you know is full of energy it's really important to balance things out as much as you possibly can and those are all the tips that i have for right now thank you so much christy all right, thank you, Oriana. We appreciate you. And uh, I also see that our um, other wonderful intern, Sanjana, is on the line as well. Sanjana, I'm not going to um, put you on the spot, but perhaps uh, before we go into the breakouts, uh, if you have anything additional that you'd like to share about time management as a busy student at Drexel University, we would love to hear that as well. Um, so let's talk a little bit now about, um, about priorities. So again, um, when you think about your time, um, it's very important to consider um, that you're using your time to your best advantage. We all feel like we have um, not enough time in the day. And please feel free to use the chat room if you, if you agree with this. If you, if you agree that there's just never enough time in the day, you have too many things on your plate, it's impossible to get it all done, and you go to bed and you still have things on your to-do list. I think a lot of us kind of feel that way. Um, so it's really important to, yeah, and especially those of us that are busy, I, I think that just by nature of um, the students who are joining us, you're already leaders and you're already probably taking on a lot. Um, so yeah, everybody's saying, and then, and then our, our volunteers as well, and I know you're all movers and shakers and it's impossible. And guess what? Um, for us as women, very often in the future, um, we have additional tasks that we take on in our homes as well. So it's very hard to get things done, especially um, looking ahead, if you have a family, um, many of those tasks just get, um, get, get, uh, get, get taken on by, by us. So um, it's really important to think about your priorities 
and that you are using your time wisely aligned with your own personal priorities. So let's talk about that a little bit and, and what I mean by that. So when we talk about time management, we often think about our, that big to-do list and we get overwhelmed because we never have enough time for everything. It's easy to fall behind. It's easy to pro procrastinate. And when we procrastinate, it makes everything worse because we feel even more stressed. Um, and I know we've, a lot of us have, uh, have experienced that as well. So when you think about your to-do list, if you align your to-do list with your priorities, that can really help you de-stress and then find more time for the things that matter most to you. So let's think, talk about what this looks like. Um, and this is how we can determine what exactly our priorities are. So many times, when, if you're in the workplace, if you're working, um, you'll have what's called a year-end performance review. And our volunteers who are joining, if, you, if you're familiar with this, if you have a year-end performance review, please feel free to go ahead and post that in the chat room if you'd like. Um, we have year-end performance reviews at Junior Achievement. And we figure out what our goals are sometimes at the beginning of the year. And at the end of the year, we look at that to see if we've reached our goals. So performance review is a formal assessment where your manager evaluates your work performance, identifies strengths and weaknesses, offers feedback, and sets goals for future performances. Now, here's the thing. We often look back on our performance, like how did we do last year? But we really take the time to look ahead to our biggest goals. So one way to do that is by writing your own year-end performance review now before the year is over. So for our high school students who have joined, um, we have a report card at the end of the year. You'll have a report card at the end of the year or at midterms. Um, same thing, you know, you have your, if you're a college student, you'll get your grades at the end of the year, at the end of the semester. Um, that's sort of like a performance review. Sometimes your professors or your teachers will include additional things in there and aside from just your grades. So think about uh, performance review as being sort of like your report card. So um, now we're gonna do kind of a group activity all together. So students and volunteers, if you have something to write on, or if you wanna put some, something down in your phone, if you're not using your phone to, to view this, um, or even if you just wanna think about some things and just commit them to, to sh your short-term memory for a moment, um, we're gonna do this kind of group activity together where we think about our performance review, but in the future, what does that look like? Okay, so we're all, let's pretend that it's the end of the year and you're giving yourself a performance review. It's been an absolutely amazing year for you. You reached all your goals. You were just fantastic. So what three to five things that you did you do that made it so amazing? So everybody take a moment and think about that. If you're looking ahead to your performance review and you did great, what were some of those things that you did? Okay, I'll give everybody another minute to think about some answers about what they might put what would be the great things that could be on their performance review that they did? They're looking to the future. And if you have some ideas, if you have some thoughts, please feel free to share them in the chat. Um, if there's something in there that you feel like you did, like you wanna do really well, that's gonna be on that performance review, um, go ahead and post that in the chat room. Maybe you got um, an A in physics, or maybe um, you uh, reached a record a school record on your sports team, or maybe you um, tried out for your school play and you got a party, or maybe you got a part-time job and it's helping you earn some money for college. Um, anything that you wanna put on there and, and volunteers as well. If you've got something that you are doing with work that you wanna put in there, um, you can go ahead and do that. And if you, if you wanna share any of, your, any of your ideas, go ahead and post them right there in the chat room. Um, next, next question. So we're going to use that vision for your performance review and identify a few goals that you can set for yourself and think about how can you make them concrete and measurable. So for example, going back to, um, oh, I love this, the braiding, that's fantastic. So going back to the example of, um, uh, of you, you, you got a job, you got a part-time job and um, you're earning some money for college. So 
if um, maybe your your goals would be to uh, write your resume or um, find some references and go out and look at some job postings and practice your interview skills. So those could be some goals that you could have to, to meet that, so some things that you can do to meet that goal. And then the last question kind of feeds into the, the, the previous one. What are some of the steps you can take right away to help you reach your goals? These are the things that you wanna be sure to fit into your schedule. This, and this is the key here. So when we're talking about time management our priorities, these are the things that we're talking about. So if your goal, if, if when you're thinking about your performance review, um, if one of those things was um, you uh, set a school record on your sports team, right? Um, then you want to uh, first, you know, make the team, and then practice, or um, you know, take the time to uh, perfect your your skills and your strengths that will help you break that record. And then, what are those steps that you can take? So, if you want to um, say you want to uh, get a, a a top time in your spring track meet, um, you're going to want to make sure that you put some practice time in your schedule every day. And those are your priorities. So when you're looking at your time management, those are the things that you wanna focus on. Okay, so I'll give everybody another minute to write their answers. And again, we're going to share all of this when we go to our um, breakout session. Okay, I'm gonna to move to this next screen here. Um, and now we're gonna talk about what matters to you. So we just identified some of our priorities, what, what some of our priorities might be in relation to goals that we've set for ourselves for the year. So let's think about some other things that really matter to you. And these are also your priorities. Um, so obviously for me, um, my work is a priority. Uh, this program, the Women's Future Leadership Academy is a priority. Um, and then, you know, I, ha I have children, so my children are my priority. So those are the things that really matter. Um, it could be something that is really important to you, maybe something that you have to do, something that you do really well and that you like to do. Those are all also your priorities. So take a couple of minutes and jot down what some of those things might be, or you can post them in the chat room. What are the things that really matter to you? Uh, maybe your friendships, maybe you're involved in an after school club that you really like to do. Um, all of those things will be additional priorities for you. All right, I'll give everybody another minute. Think about some of those things that matter to you. And then the next step here is um, make, when you make a to-do list, um, everybody always talks about that to-do list, checking off your to-do list, either putting things on post-it notes, putting them in your calendar, all these things. Um, and that's great. I, lo I love the, the answers in the chat room. Thank you. Um, making sure that that to-do list aligns with all those things that you put before, your priorities and the steps towards your goals. So if you're looking at what you do during the day, if you look at your day-to-day -day activities, I know most of us um, do things that we have to do. We have to sleep, we have to eat breakfast, we have to get on the bus, we have to go to school, right? We have to come home, maybe we have to look after our siblings, maybe we have to do chores in the house. Those are things that we have to do. Um, but we also sometimes have a little bit of, a little bit of wiggle room, a little bit of free time. Um, so whatever time you have left, are they aligned with your priorities? Are they aligned with the steps you're gonna to take towards your goals? Um, how many of us, and I'm very guilty of it, I have a stressful day, so what do I do? I sit down on the couch and I watch three episodes of my favorite show on Netflix, right? We all do that, especially now, times are tough, we're stressed. Um, so if we, if we have the time for Netflix, which could be, you know, a four-hour chunk of time, then that's time that we could spend, is that time that you could spend doing something that's more aligned with your goals or things that you have to do? 
So think about that. We probably all have something that we could cut out of our daily activities or our weekly activities. And if there's something that you think that maybe you could cut out of, you can put that in the chat room too. All right, yeah, there's distractions all over. Music, YouTube, our phones, um, social media, they're all distractions. Um, and it, it's difficult, you know, it, it's very difficult. We all fall into that. And really kind of the first step is really understanding that this is a time waster. And even though we enjoy it, and even though it's good to de-stress, is it taking up too much of our time that it's gonna make our stress worse? And it's gonna make us um, procrastinate more. Okay, so moving along, uh, let's think about some time management strategies. So when we go into our breakout rooms again, we're gonna kind of talk about some of the things that you wrote down or some of the things that you thought about. We're gonna have a discussion around that. Um, but first let's talk about a couple of time management strategies that you can utilize as a young person. Um, so the first, first thing is use a calendar. Um, any kind of any kind of device that you have to organize things um, and avoid missing those deadlines. So if you um, and you can go ahead and post it in the chat room if you use a calendar. Um, we all have most of us probably have calendars on our phones or on our laptops. Those are great because we always have our phone with us usually, and um, that way you can always look and see. Okay, what do I have going on? What am I going to miss? Um, you can put thing you know you can put things that you have to do at a particular time in your calendar. Um, things you have to remember. Um, if, you, if you're a busy person, you really have to kind of plan ahead. So at the beginning of a semester, you could take really a broad view of your commitments by putting them in your calendar, like those assignment due dates, exams, you can put them all in there. Um, and your calendar should also put in fixed commitments. Like if you have class at a particular time, if you have work at a particular time, if you have practice, you can put those in there too. And that way, when you have everything in your calendar, you can look at the specific day or the specific week. And if you have a lot of stuff on there, it'll see, boy, I've got a heavy week. I've got a heavy day. So then you can, if you've got a heavy day coming up or heavy week coming up, you can plan ahead for that and say, all right, my Wednesday is crazy. Let's see what I can get done on Monday. Because if I don't get the stuff done on Monday and it gets pushed back, I'm not gonna have time to do it Wednesday. And then my Wednesday is gonna be really stressed. So having that calendar um, where you can refer to all the time is really easy. Um, same with setting deadlines and goals. If you set deadlines and goals on what to work on first, that's another key to time management. Um, when you think about um, putting them in, prior, in priority order, what has to be completed today, what would be nice to finish today, and what can be pushed tomorrow if necessary. So you can color code, you can put letters there, um, but if you, if you prioritize that way, something that has to be done, something that would be great to be done, or something that I can kick the can for a couple of days, you can, you can kind of mark them like that. Um, also notice and deal with your procrastination. Again, that makes everything worse. We get anxious. Um, we have to rush through things. Sometimes it's a test or a paper or something. Um, that's a big enemy to time management. And you should really be aware of why you are avoiding the work, right? Sometimes it's such a social emotional thing why we procrastinate. Maybe we're scared of doing something. Maybe we don't understand it. Um, so if it's something that you don't understand or if you're scared or if you don't know the next step, just talk to somebody, talk to your teacher. Um, it's great to have some help. Um, address the problem while you're procrastinating. And sometimes that makes it a little less daunting. Um, work on one project at a time. Um, multitasking, a lot of times we say we're multitaskers, but our brain really isn't meant to multitask. So if we're <clears throat> excuse me, if we're doing homework, and we've got music in the background, some of us can do that, but some of us really can't. Um, it's very hard for your brain to focus on a couple of different things at once. So think about if you're, if you're multitasking, um, try to cut something out and see if it's easier for you to just focus on one particular thing. Um, next, find your optimal time to work. Now, this is interesting. Some of us are morning people. Some of us are better in the afternoon. Some of us do our best work at two in the morning. So when you, um, when you figure out when your peak performance is, um, that's when your work is done during your individual's prime time. So think about when you work best and try to put a lot of your important activities there. Um, and finally, be, be realistic about time. Sometimes we don't accurately judge how much time something's gonna take. Um, so to avoid the common problem, think about how long the chore is gonna take and then compare it to the actual time it took 
after you finished it. And that will give you an idea of if you're being realistic or not. And then the last one, take frequent breaks. So important. Um, deep focus is really tiring. Um, take breaks when something requires a lot of attention. Um, you can step away and do something simple like put a load of laundry in or uh, step outside or, or something like that. Take a little break. Okay, so those are some time management strategies uh, that we have, um, that, that I wanted to share with you that I found on a, um, actually found on the Rutgers University website. Um, so I figured that's a, that's a very credible source, but I wanted to invite some of our students or our volunteers as well to share, and thank you so much, great, great feedback in the, in the chat room there. Um, I wanted to see if, um, if Sanjana, if you have still joined, I'm not sure if you're still on the line or not, if you wanted to um, share any thoughts that you have about time management as a student. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Excellent. Hi, everyone. Welcome, it's great to be here. Um, so yeah, I just want to completely echo what Oriana said earlier um, and some of what we touched on. Um, I definitely think calendars have been a big help for me and especially with what Christy was saying with, you know, having like a very high level overview of everything that you need to accomplish in a semester or, you know, a certain time period um, that really helps with planning. Um, so like whatever, you know that you have on deck, whether it's, you know, these weekly um, meetings for the Women's Future Leadership Academy, or if you know you have practices or classes or things like that, I highly recommend just putting everything in a calendar, um, as well as blocking out time for when you want to do your homework, um, or, you know, when you have school, things like that. Um, it just really helps a lot. Um, and also, if you really like to write things down and have a planner, um, sometimes it can be nice to just kind of sit down and um, maybe put like a TV show on or have songs on in the background, similar to what Oriana said earlier, and just write down whatever you need to do. Um, kind of finding fun ways to get things done is a really helpful way to prioritize your time and your responsibilities. Excellent, Sanjana, thank you so much. And uh, great advice as always. And Oriana, thank you uh, for that advice. So we are going to go into our breakout rooms in just a moment. So again, we have a small group, which is great. Um, so I think we're just going to go into um, maybe two, uh, two little rooms here. We have three volunteers, it looks like. We have Anne and Marlon and Melinda. Um, I think uh, I have your names right, right? So, um, so uh, welcome volunteers. Um, how about, can we have our volunteers, would you mind, uh, since we're all together, just quickly introducing yourselves, uh, Melinda and Marlon and Anne. So, sure, I'm happy so, to start. Yeah. Great, thank you. No problem. Uh, my name is Melinda Cora. It's super exciting to be with all of you today. I work for PGM Quantitative Solutions. It's one of the PGM businesses, large, part of the larger Prudential organization. I've been the head of project management for PGM Quant for 13 years now. Uh, so I have a lot of experience with time management. <laughs> it's literally how I run my days and uh, it's just exciting to share with all of you. Excellent. Thank you, Melinda. Welcome. Thanks. So hi, everyone. My name is Marilyn Mejia. And uh, like Melinda, I also work for PGM Quantitative Solutions. Um, I currently work in uh, cybersecurity. I do information security. Um, and I've been working with the company for almost three years now. I did start as an intern while I was still in college. Um, for my last year of college, I, I was still um, working part time and going to school. And then I was granted the opportunity to become uh, full time uh, about a couple months ago, like six months ago, I would say. It's great to be here and I'm so excited to get to know everyone. All right, thank you, Marilyn. We're glad you're here. Hi, everybody. This is Anne George and I'm from Deloitte. Uh, I've been working with Deloitte for um, about a year now and uh, I've taken part in one of the junior achievement programs before and it was a great opportunity to connect with all of you and I'm excited to be back here again. Hi. Right, wonderful. Thank you, Anne. Welcome, welcome back. All right, so we've got some great volunteers and some great students, um, and now we're going to have some great conversations. And again, um, this is uh, this is very um, very low key, very informal. We're just going to have a little fun here. 
uh, for the next 15 minutes or so. But these are these are the questions. Um, these are kind of your talking points that, that um, I'd like for all of you guys to kind of uh, work on here in, the, in your breakouts. So mentors, you can start. Everything's on the screen here. You can start by just uh, saying hello, introducing yourself, have the students take turns introducing themselves. Um, so if you want to talk a little bit more uh, mentors about your job, you can, or, or students, if you have questions for the mentors about their job, you can certainly ask. Um, and then students, please share one or more of your priorities with your group. So some of those priorities we talked about before. Um, share one or more of those priorities, uh, what are those things that are important to you or that align with your goals. And then mentors, you can go ahead and do the same. Share one or more of your priorities that you identified. And then mentors, go ahead and go into some more strategies of time management that you found helpful, or maybe that you use at work. Maybe your office has a strategy that they use or a process. Um, and then students, maybe there's something that works for you. Maybe there's something that you do to help with time management. So does anybody have any questions? Does everybody um, kind of understand what we're gonna be talking about here? Okay, volunteers, we're good. Just break up into two little groups. Um, simply, oh yes, hello. I hear somebody on the phone. I believe they're asking if we can hear them. It's very fuzzy. Oh uh, yeah, it's it's a little it's a little fuzzy. Uh, we can hear you a little bit. Um, but um, when we go into the breakouts, maybe we'll have uh, better luck. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start these and simply follow the, the prompt on your screen. And then we'll bring everybody back in maybe 15 minutes or so. OK? All right, Christy, anything's good? Uh, 